This is a Power 98.7 podcast. Now we're talking. Subscribe to Power 98.7 podcasts in iTunes or wherever you get your podcasts. There's more on power987.co.za. We go straight into hashtag SME Tuesday right here on Power Business. A very exciting conversation that I'm looking forward to with Nick Herlambos, a professional speaker, obsessive entrepreneur and best-selling author. Good evening, Nick. So much for having me. It's uh, an absolute pleasure. In uh, the dynamics uh, of uh, the current economic uh, landscape, we find ourselves uh, asking very interesting questions and challenging ones, uh, particularly when it comes to pivoting and it's become the new buzzword. But I think the starting point for you and I is uh, to s- just uh, briefly talk about uh, what it is that you do in terms of the professional speaking side of things, particularly when it comes to stoking confidence uh, in a situation that still remains uh, quite uncertain. Sure. Um, so I've been an entrepreneur since I was 16 and um, over the last 20 years have failed more than I've succeeded, but have managed to build a couple of successful businesses. And over the last 10 or so years, I've also uh, been a professional speaker going at events and into corporates to help them understand how to build more entrepreneurial and more curious businesses. Um, So that's kind of what I do at a a professional speaking level. And it's uh, very interesting that you say you failed more than, uh, you know, more than you could count. And that's (laughs) such a beautiful story, Nick, because failure then comes with uh, lessons to be learned. Those lessons then become critical around what it is that one is trying to build as a business and the fundamentals thereof, which is my question directed to you, is at a starting point when you do then fail how do you pick yourself up to keep going sure i think that the key thing and uh, through my many many failures i've learned that what you need to do and this is a big part of what i talk to businesses about is Mm. you need to make sure that your failures aren't catastrophic they need to be small failures and uh, in south africa we're a very conservative business country and Mm -hmm. we like to think we have one shot and we don't. We just don't. Yeah. We need to reframe our ideas of failure. Failure is not an end point. It's a through point. It's something that you need to get comfortable with. Mm. I've never met a successful person or company that have avoided failure to, say, to their success. It doesn't work that way. You go mm. through failure. You don't avoid it. So that's kind of the way that I see failures. We need to embrace it as a learning experience if they are small experiments that don't break you or your business while you're learning these lessons. And would you say that avoiding failure would be maybe the basics of fundamentally failing then? Yes. I think that if you are trying to succeed by avoiding failure, you don't understand how businesses are built. Businesses are built in the overcoming of failure, in the flexing of your resilience muscle and becoming agile to your surroundings. You can't try and protect. Hi, Nick. We seem Perilous. to be losing. It doesn't work. Oh, sorry, we had a bit of a break in connection there. Oh, but apologies. I got the gist of uh, what uh, you were imparting there as uh, information around uh, the, you know, being aware and acknowledging that uh, exactly. failure is not uh, the end all. And as we are talking about a new dynamic and a new normal to an approach in business, uh, a short while ago you touched on the character of one's business. What goes into building the character of a business to ensure that uh, When you do get to a moment of failure that is meant to be a teachable moment, then you are able to pivot and maybe then seek to address the demands of the market that you are servicing as well as coming back to maybe rejig where you started from. Yeah, I think it's important um, to remember that businesses consist of people and the, the way that I like to say this is that your business starts before you start your business. Mm. So you need to do what I call the business mile. You need to make sure that your mindset, your ideas, your lifestyle and the effort you're putting in are all right. I think that without the right mindset, mm. you are doomed for failure. You can't resist. Uh, the change, you can't overcome difficulties if your fundamental mindset is a negative one or if you aren't mentally fit. Uh, Mental health is such a severe problem for small business entrepreneurs and we neglect it like we think we don't need help mentally. We do. You need a coach for your mental stability. You need to get that under control. That's how you overcome these difficulties. If you personally aren't okay, your business won't be. That is so important and it speaks to the notion of do, fail, learn, 
Repeat. I love that because <laughs> it's you. so direct uh, in that it speaks to just a hierarchy of what ex- what steps one should be following. I want to talk about then also the uh, mental health of uh, and strength that you are talking about because mm. this then would dictate a change in one's mindset. Whether you've Definitely. already started your business or failed once, uh, you would uh, absolutely have to change the entire way of thinking as an approach uh, to your business. That can't necessarily be easy, particularly when uh, one is looking at financial challenges as a failure. Yeah, definitely not easy. And especially considering that historically we've been tricked into thinking that our personal mental stability isn't a top priority. Mm. We're always told to put everybody else first. And fundamentally, I don't agree with that. I call this the sacrifice fallacy, the fallacy that you need to sacrifice your mental and physical health Mm. to build something important. Actually, it's the other way around. You need to put yourself at the top of your priority list because you can't fill up somebody else's cup if yours is empty. You need to make sure that you're fine yeah. and then the rest will follow. So it's, it's just this really basic lie we've been told that we can work 20 hour days for mm. three years, not eat properly and everything mm. will be fine. It won't. You need to get your sleep. You need to exercise. You need to eat right. And then your work will actually be at a different level that you won't even recognize. I can't argue with that. Uh, And uh, it brings me to my next point around uh, the manner in which uh, the business landscape uh, is changing. Even the entrepreneurial space is changing in that uh, one cannot necessarily just uh, be starting a business for the end goal of revenue. There Mm -hmm. is a serious push now, more than ever, that a business needs to have a fiber, a soul, a body of its own, that it resonates uh, with uh, the target market as well as consumers. How important is that dynamic becoming? I think it's imperative, but I think that um, at the moment, most companies are kind of paying lip service to it. Um, mm-hmm. I don't believe in the phrase purpose-driven marketing. Yeah. Either you are a purpose-driven company that happens to do marketing or you do not have a purpose. You can't pretend to be one. Exactly right. <laughs> so I don't know if lots of businesses are getting it right. But look, this is part of the reason I started my, my foundation um, called Slow Hustle, uh, mm. the Slow Fund. Um, it's at slowhustle.org. Um, we giving away a thousand rand every single day to a person to help them start their side hustle plus 30 minutes of coaching. Wonderful. That is a purpose. It's a nonprofit business. Mm. There is no intention to make money. My goal is to help the country start as many businesses as possible. That's purpose. Yeah. Off the back of that, you can then build anything else as long as you're starting with a good purpose. How is that initiative being received so far? Because it is definitely a need. Um, look, in the first three months, we've had 11,500 applicants, and um, that's overwhelming. It's mm. better than I ever would have imagined it was going to do. We are attracting donors from all over, um, and I have some big announcements coming up in that regard. Yeah. But if you want to contribute, you can go to slowhustle.org, and you can contribute. And if you'd like to enter, you can go there, too. Um, but the goal is really simple. Uh, I believe that entrepreneurs at a very basic level need a little bit of money and a little bit of support Mm. to get that idea off the ground. And that's what we try and do every single day is start a new business. So anyone can basically pledge or, you know, um, support a business by uh, giving in money into this particular foundation. That is exactly right. At slowhustle.org, a thousand rand kickstarts a business. Or if you have a business idea, all you need to do is answer four simple questions and you get entered as an applicant. And once a week, we choose seven people that we give a thousand rand away to. Let's take a short break. We continue this conversation with Nick Harlambos in the hashtag SME Tuesday right here on Power Business. Power, Power Business, Monday to Thursday, 6 to 8 p.m. And Fridays, 6 to 7 p.m. on Power 98.7. It is still the hashtag SME Tuesday segment at 7.22 right here on Power Business. We pick up on our conversation with the professional speaker, obsessive entrepreneur and best-selling author, that is Nick Herlambosa. If you've missed any of what we were discussing prior to that short break, of course, right here on Power Business, every single segment would be podcast on the Power 98.7 website. Nick, as we pick up from what we were talking about around the essence of a business, the fiber of it and the soul of the business. Um, I also want to find out about uh, the dynamics of a consumer that is changing that seeks to support businesses that they relate to. 
Yeah, I, I think that um, consumers are definitely speaking with their wallets. Mm-hmm. And um, I think with the economy the way it is globally, never mind just in South Africa, people mm-hmm. are being much more careful with what they spend their money on when they do. Mm-hmm. But let's not mince any words. When people want to spend money, they do. Apple yeah. doesn't struggle. Apple mm-hmm. is a trillion dollar business. Mm-hmm. So if you are motivated to spend your money, you will. So what I, I try to tend to tell people that I coach on my online program is people buy from people and people buy stories. Yeah. Um, So you need to figure out what your story is. Why are you different? What's going to make people engage with you over somebody else? Because I promise you now, your business is not special or unique unless you tell people that it is. I love that. So blunt, but yet uh, it resonates. (laughs) (laughs) I'm nothing if not blunt to me. And that bluntness is needed also when we talk about uh, the gig economy and uh, even one thinking of starting a side hustle, because essentially you would need uh, both uh, feet on each side of uh, your corporate job as well as your side hustle. So the honesty that is needed, because, uh, yeah, at times, uh, you know, as a giga, you find yourself splitting into two. Definitely. And I think um, I'm, I'm making a prediction that within five years, the most attractive corporate jobs will be ones that engage you with yeah. your side hustle. Yeah. They're not going to forbid you to have a side hustle. There is research to indicate that if you let your team actually have side hustles that are non-competitive, they bring those skills into your business for free. Mm. So without you paying for them to go and learn something new, they're learning something new. As an employee, what you have to be conscious of is, Don't compete with your employer. Mm. Do something that is adjacent to your employment that complements it but doesn't compete with it and be transparent. Don't lie. Rather go and check your employment contract, talk to your immediate boss and get their permission to build something cool. Very great advice and uh, one that I would like to uh, you to impart advice on also is uh, around uh, the fear of starting. Um, a lot of times when we speak to entrepreneurs, uh, they will uh, explain, especially when it uh, comes to the side hustle uh, part of uh, things that uh, some even experience uh, what is known as imposter syndrome. And that goes back to the mental strength and health of an individual to actually take on this big task. Yeah. So for those of you who haven't heard of imposter syndrome before, um, it's basically in spite of external validation, Mm -hmm. you don't believe you belong where you are. That feeling you have when you walk into a meeting and you think that if someone scratches below the surface, (laughs) they're going to find out that you're a fraud. Mm -hmm. Um, What I'm here to tell you is that everybody feels that way. Everybody from Richard Branson to Oprah to Ariana Huffington to Elon Musk have all reported feeling imposter syndrome. Mm -hmm. It never goes away. You have to learn how to live with it. So on that point, the fear of starting is something I've become quite accustomed to coaching people through. Yeah. Um, and, and one of the main things, and this is more of my brutal honesty here, and I mean this in the nicest way possible to anybody listening, but nobody cares about you. Mm. Nobody mm-hmm. is watching you. Mm-hmm. Nobody is waiting for you to fail. Mm-hmm. You think that they are, but let me tell you what happens when I don't post on Instagram. Yeah. No, nothing. Mm. Nobody phones me and says, hey, Nick, I've been waiting for you to post on Instagram. <laughs> Why didn't you? Yeah. Nobody is watching me. And that should be the most liberating thing you come to understand about oh, the world yeah. is nobody is waiting for you to succeed or fail. In fact, most of the closest people in your life probably aren't thinking about you from day to day. Mm. And that's good. That gives you the freedom to be who you want to be, act the way you want to act and build the things you want to build. So don't worry about whether people are liking your latest Mm -hmm. Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, FaceTube, whatever. Just produce because you like producing and eventually you'll be recognized for that. Would that be the mindset that one should then use when uh, as an entrepreneur you face challenges? I mean, yes, we know there are funding issues, but at the same time, there are other matters that uh, would uh, result in a business failing. And what we know in South Africa in the SME sector is uh, one of late payments. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Look, I think that funding is a problem, that's for sure. But the best kind of funding is sales. And Mm. most small businesses, in my experience, I coach and I work with, they think they're selling enough, but they're not. Ah. One sales call a day is not a sales call. 50 in a day, that's different. Mm. So if you are struggling with funding, stop asking for a handout. The government isn't going to help you. That's not what they're there for. Mm. We've been proving that for decades. You need to go out and make sales. That's the game. In the private sector, make sales, get customers, have a product people want, and make more sales. That's it. 
Very, very basic and simple. And uh, I really want to find out then, uh, because uh, as we are talking, I myself am getting quite encouraged in listening to you. And I understand then why you would be a professional speaker, given the the, uh, uh, experience that you have as an entrepreneur. And I'm certain that uh, our power listeners would also want to know about how you maneuvered around the challenges that you faced as an entrepreneur in a dispensation like South Africa. But uh, like you said, it seems like you sucked this from, uh, you know, from way back because 16 is a tender age. <laughs> yeah, look, I mean, the, the thing that I tell people is just consistency. We all have this long timeline that we, a uh, short timeline rather, we think that we're going to start a business, we're going to turn a sale, we're going to be profitable and it's glamorous and it's amazing. And it's not. Like, it's hard. Yeah. It's hard to build stuff in any market, in any country. It's not different or special here. So consistency is the key word. Uh, you need to be prolific, not perfect. Mm-hmm. Produce stuff every day. Go out and tell the world what you're doing and do it for five years. Yeah. That's how you succeed. You don't succeed by doing it for two months and then wondering why you're not like Kim Kardashian famous. Mm-hmm. That's just mm-hmm. not how it works. So regardless of where you are, where you're building, how you're building or what you're building, just be consistent. Wake up every day and do the hard work that nobody else is willing to do. We are seeing that uh, the uh, digital progression is moving at a very fast uh, pace uh, due to where we find ourselves uh, with uh, the dynamics Mm. of COVID-19. Would you then say the outlook on the tech startup space uh, is uh, far more of an opportunity in a country like South Africa for entrepreneurs to play a role in that space, but at the same time, do not be fooled about putting in the work? Yeah. Um, look, I think that the, what COVID has done for all of us is shoot us forward five years. There is no new normal here. It's just an accelerated <laughs> yeah. normal. So and to be perfectly frank, anybody who wants to go back to where we were, they don't know how bad it really was. Mm-hmm. Like normal wasn't so good. Let's remake this new version of life that we want. And for me, as young South African entrepreneurs, that means build a digital product that has an addressable market of the world. You don't need to sell to South Africans anymore. Oh, there are yeah. lots of people all around the world waiting for you to sell to them. So think of your business in a digital world and build something that isn't localized. Go and get people all over the world to pay you in hard currency and then build your base in South Africa where it's affordable. The time is absolutely now. Thank you so, so much, Nick, and all the best to you. That is professional speaker, obsessive entrepreneur and best-selling author, Nick Haralambos, speaking to us right here on Power Business, of course, in the hashtag SME Tuesday edition of the show. And it is in partnership with Power 98.7 along with MTN. It's half past seven. You've been listening to a Power 98.7 podcast. For more podcasts, visit power987.co.za or subscribe wherever you get your podcasts.